Hey guys, welcome to the Solution Architect channel. And in this video, we're going to discuss classes, methods, and variables. Um, we're always using C Sharp and Visual Studio Code. And remember, in each video, there will be a demonstration on how I do it in Visual Studio Code. So what is a class? A class is a blueprint or a template that describes a specific action to perform. So it will execute whatever you tell the class to do. When you instantiate a class, it becomes an object. And in programming, we always say an object is an instance of a class. Define a structure um, of the class. So I'm going to show you what the class structure looks like and what does this mean. So here is an example of a class, public class, my class. My class obviously can, can be anything that you name it. So public means that is the access modifier. You can also um, change that to be a private class, protected class, internal, private protected and protected internal in C Sharp. And the class obviously defining that this is a class what we're dealing with. And then my class is the class name. This is very, very basic and it's meant for beginners. There is much more things you can do with a class. And it always starts with um, curly brackets and it ends with a curly bracket close. So what is a method? A method uh, is code, basically, that contains uh, specific statements to perform a specific instruction or instructions. A method can only live within a class, and you can have multiple methods within one class. A method can also take input parameters, and a method can also return output parameters. So here is the structure of a method. Yet the, our example number one is public void start program and it's always got um, open and close brackets and curly brackets open and close. Public obviously is a, again is the access modifier. Um, public means it can ac be accessed with anywhere within your code. You can also change the modifier to protected or private which is only accessible within the derived clauses. Void means, in this case, that nothing is going to be returned from this, this method. Example number two, public int start program, open brackets, int calc1, int calc2. Now, this, this means that this is a public uh, class, and then the next line you'll see is this is what is going to be returned. The only thing that this me method is doing now is just calculating the parameters that's been given to this uh, method and it will calculate one and two together and return the result. So int basically, and I'll sp talk about variables uh, just now, but int is the return value. You always have your return value. So public, your return value will be here. It can be int, it can be string, it can be an object, it can be anything else inside here. So the parameters that you pass, you can have multiple parameters here. I would suggest if it, if it becomes really like 10 or 20 or 30 parameters, and obviously something is wrong with your design, but you can rather uh, pass in an object here as well. But in this case, we are pass passing two parameters, one calc1 and one calc2. The return parameters, as I said, will uh, return the result of that calculation. What is a variable or variables? A variable is a name given to a storage area in the computer's memory. It can be used within classes and methods. Um, you have two different types of variables that you get. You get a value, value type variable that is stored in the memory stack. And then you get a reference type um, variable that 
is uh, stored on the heap with a reference to the stack. And then you've got uh, your data types that you get uh, is can be int or boolean or decimal or extra etc. And that is your your value types. And then um, your reference types can basically be things like class classes, objects, or strings, or delegates. So let me give you some examples of variables. So for value type variables, you get boolean, byte, uh, character, decimal, double, etc., etc., etc. And then you get your reference type, which is string. It can be any type of array, um, and it can be a class or a delegate. Now let's jump into the demo. So you need to open Visual Studio Code and create a console app. If you did not watch the video how I create my first C Sharp application, um, go to that video first, how to create a console application, the whole world one, and then come back to this video. What I'm going to show you now is actually how to create classes and how to create methods. Out of the box, the system will create you a program and main. And when you execute this program, it will always look for program and it will look for main. And this is where it will always start executing instructions. So what I want to do is I want to create a new class. Um, you can create a new file here, but I, I just for simplistic sake going to do it inside my main class here. And I'm going to call it public class display value. Um, sorry for that. And then my class is created, but there's nothing inside there. So I cannot, I need to have something there that executes it. So I need to create a method. Public uh, void. So public can be seen, can be viewed from anywhere where you actually instantiate a class and then void is going to return nothing and we've got no parameters. But what I want to do is I want to just copy and paste this over. So I cut this, paste this in here. And what, what I need to do now, because this is now two different classes, and you've got a static method here. So like I said in one of my videos, static is a method that you don't need to instantiate. And you can't mix static methods with uh, normal methods like, like this one here. That's why you need a separate class. So um, I want to reference this class to say, um, this is how you do it. So what this does is this piece of code instantiate a new object of this class. I'm going to take this class and what's nice about Visual Studio Code, it's got IntelliSense. So if you click now, just dot, anything that's available for that specific class, the display message is now available there. So if I click that, there's my display message and I need to open and close it with brackets and then you always in C sharp need to end it with a um, semicolon. Now let's run this application and see what happens. Okay, it's still display that. So no, nothing is broken. What I've done now is just created a new class, instantiate that class, and pass uh, and actually just execute display, which is my method. Now let's mix it up a little bit. Let's add a a string here. Um, so what I'm doing is now I'm, I'm I'm adding a parameter to my method. I'm going to take this 
and I'm going to what I'm going to do right line anything that's been passed through to this parameter you see is this it's going to display in my console now I'm getting an error here in this class is because it's ex expecting a parameter so I need to give it something so I'm going to do a parameter here say hello Okay, now I pass this as a parameter to this method. Let's go and run it. See, hello clauses and methods. Now I want to do something different. I want to do something different so you can see how to use variables. Now there's two ways of de declaring a variable. You can declare a variable within the class itself. That means if you create, create for example, if I create a string, um, my message inside here, now, now I can give it a name immediately. I'm just gonna copy and paste that over. There's different ways of doing this. This is probably not the best way. You can also, because this is a global variable, which means that if you've got multiple methods in here, each method will be able to use that variable. That's what, what I mean by global variable for the specific class. You can also make it private, which means that you cannot use it without this class. What I'm going to do now is just take this as my variable and put it in there okay this needs to be a static method to s s needs to be static okay so let's um, run this application and see what happens see it still works no problems next thing we want to do is I want to see if that works So what I've done now is I have not given it a, um, a value here. So the value I passed within this method, and that should also work. Okay, this is my new method. The last thing I want to do now is, what I want to do is I want to return something back here. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, to move this console right line back to the main main method. And I'm going to change this to return a string. Okay. And what I need to do is I'm going to say return um, my message. But I'm gonna just gonna add something. So if you want to add to a string, normally just say plus. Um, okay. So what it should do, it should take this method, of this uh, this string, and it should add that string, and return this. But now what we want to do is we want to take this method and pass it into the right line. I know, I know if you keep track with me, what, I, what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm actually doing one step. There's a few things that you can do. You can, you can do a, say, a string, um, return str e equals to that and then you take the return string inside here 
But this is a long way of doing it. Because um, what I want to do is I want to execute just one. So if you limit it to one, it actually you don't, you, you know, you limit the number of executions within your application. So let's run this. And Bob's your uncle, you can see that it actually added that to, to my string and it write it out to the console. Okay, so that, that is my session. Thank you very much for watching this video and please subscribe and click the notification button um, to receive much more content coming. Thank you.